The Small Business Show, episode 387 for Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are using our business brains and small business-ing every single week. Sponsors for this episode include Bambi.com slash small, where you can go and schedule your free trial and learn all about having your own dedicated HR manager and Zapier at Zapier.com slash SBS, where you can try Zapier for free. The automation, the glue that holds the Internet together is the way I like to think of it. And then we have another podcast to tell you about a little bit later in the show, too. We'll talk about all of that, uh, you know, in a few minutes here for now. Small Businessing in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Good, good. good. Coming off the 4th of July holiday. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, it was, yeah, I enjoyed having the, the, the longer weekend. It's, you know, I mean, it, sometimes they, uh, they interrupt the flow of, you know, work projects and things yes. like that. And other times it's kind of a nice little respite. And this time it, it wound up being the latter for me. So. I was, I was glad yeah, for that's that. Good. Yeah. So what's, what's better a Friday off, uh, you know, holiday or a Monday, Monday, you know, we, the holidays, we always get typically get a Monday, but uh, yeah. you think the Friday's better or Monday? I like Monday better. You do. I do. Interesting. Yeah. Well, just the way my week is organized. Um, it, it, well, you know, I, I say Monday and the reason I say it is because it is easier for me to carve a Monday out of my schedule. Mondays are, are generally lighter okay. days for me. My, my week is backloaded. Uh, so my, my week I, sort of yeah. like falls into Friday. And then by the time Friday's over, it, it's like, okay, that the, the routine is finished, but Friday's kind of a big day uh, for, with a lot of things to do. So if I have to take a Friday off, which of course I do occasionally, I have to like rejigger a lot of things, a podcast schedule and some other stuff. Whereas yeah, Monday yeah. is, is I can just like, I mean, I could take Monday off most weeks and I'd probably get away with it without people noticing. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's so pretty bad. good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like Friday because I feel like, uh, for my schedule anyway, you know, you get towards the end of the week and that you kind of like, oh, okay, I can, I can cut loose. Yeah. Whereas Monday for me, I feel like I hit the ground running Tuesday and I feel, uh, already behind. It, there often. is that I, yeah, today we record this on Tuesdays and I, I have felt behind today um, yeah. I, I, yeah, I didn't wind up doing any of my normal sort of email catch up over the weekend. We were we were away all day on Sunday visiting some family elsewhere. And so I just had had a lot to c occupy my time. And, and so I, I did. I usually even hit the ground Monday sort of caught up and so Tuesday. Yeah, especially not. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think a four day weekend is probably the way to do it. Ha, there you go. <laughs> I think a lot of people would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Well, I would argue that y you could, uh, for many businesses, you could definitely do a four day work week and get just as much done and be just as productive. We experimented uh, being, with that more so with backbeat for a while. Uh, we, we all took Wednesdays off for a while. Oh, well, I mean, I say okay. we all took Wednesdays off. I, I didn't, uh, sure. but, but yes. the team did. And yeah, the the productivity was was did not change the the atmosphere changed and in many ways it changed for the better and in some ways it changed for the worse um yeah 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 but but yeah i've always been a fan of that when i ran when i sold my interest in the consulting business down in texas and and went from uh, you know I, I started working there then i became a junior partner there and then i sold my junior partnership uh, as the business was evolving in a different, as my partner and I realized we were better friends than business partners. Uh, I went back to just being a, a worker bee there and, uh, and only worked three days a week. I worked Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and those were grueling days, but I'm, I, that was arguably one of the most productive times of my life. So, um, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Hey, I want to talk about today. I want to talk about revenue stacks, and uh, we've talked a little bit about them before. But I want to take a, a deeper dive into why they're so important. But I also want to mention before we go on is I've been learning a lot about this. Uh, maybe you've heard of it, this Mark Cuban Cost Plus Drug Company, and I want to talk about it. But I want to wait till next week and 
and kind of uh, do an analysis of this concept and how arguably a guy who's got maybe one of the best, well, no best, but certainly has a business brain that he's thinking about things all the time. And this concept that he's, you know, him and a few other people have come up with, I think it's fascinating to, to uh, dissect it a bit. Yeah. So all right. Next week. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll put that on my list to dig into. I'm, I'm aware of it, but only peripherally. I have not dug into it yet. So I'm, I appreciate the heads up. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I think there's, I, I was just going to make a quick comment about it, but thinking about it as we've been discussing this uh, Friday, Monday or four day work week thing, uh, I think it's worth, you know, digging into it a little bit more and, uh, and analyzing it and how it may reflect on your small business or our small business, this, this concept that they have of disruption. Yeah. And, and let us know, folks, feedback at businessshow.co, whether how your business works when you have a holiday that adds to a weekend. Uh, how do you do it? Do you do three days with, with the Monday? I mean, obviously, this past week, it was dictated. Monday was July 4th, so there was no wiggle room, <laughs> you know, but uh, but yes. w- what works better for you? And do you do you do the four day work week or, you know, do you do the four day weekend? In fact, uh, when my kids started in school, our school district did any time there was a Monday holiday or a Friday holiday, you got both Monday and Friday every single oh. time, including Labor Day, which was bizarre because wow. school would start the Wednesday before Labor Day. You'd go Wednesday, Thursday, and then you'd be off Friday through Monday, <laughs> which was a little much. Yeah, that is interesting. But, yeah. it, but it was every, you know, every single Monday or Friday holiday throughout the year was a four-day weekend, which, and it was it actually, they timed it perfectly for us because I think that lasted through like elementary school for our kids. And then the district just changed it district wide and ratcheted it down to just the three day weekend kind of thing, you know, for those types of holidays. Uh, but it was nice when the kids were young. It was like, oh, great. We automatically yeah. get a four day weekend. Perfect. Great. You know, sounds great. I love it. But yeah, let us know. Good. Feedback at business show.com. Uh, revenue stack. All right. The. I want to talk about Revenue Stack. The other thing I want to do is tell everybody about our two sponsors for this episode, if this is a good time to do that, Mr. Gene. Yeah, these these are both terrific resources. All right. Hey, so if you're trying to grow a business, you already know that your time is precious. Imagine if, bear with me here, imagine if you could streamline those routine operation tasks that eat up your time. It's the power of automation made possible for everyone. We talk all the time here about how automation is one of the ways that we can actually cut costs, right? Because if you can find something to automate, then you can stop spending time on it or have your employees or your contractors stop spending time on it. And it leaves you that time to spend with your customers. And Zapier does this. I call it the glue that holds the internet together because it works with all the things out there. Almost all the things out there, I suppose. I haven't found one that Zapier doesn't work with, but I'm sure there is one. Like I have a thing where when one of our premium listeners, you know, from another podcast that I have, when they contribute money in, I want to be able to thank them in the show. And so what I do is I use Zapier. It sees that the order happened in our WooCommerce engine And then it ties that together and then places the specific details that I've chosen from that order into a Google Sheet so that all I have to do is open that Google Sheet and automatically there's the person's name, the date that it happened, the amount they contributed. And it doesn't have any of the other stuff. I don't need the address. I don't need any of that for that specific purpose. And this is what Zapier does. It lets you tie all these amazing things together. And in addition to Google Sheets, you know, there's QuickBooks or Facebook or Google Ads. Like I said, you can automate almost any workflow imaginable. The average Zapier user saves over $10,000 in recovered time every year. And it's no wonder that over 1.8 million people and businesses use Zapier to do this streamlining. So you get to see for yourself why teams at Airtable, Dropbox, HubSpot, Zendesk, and thousands of other companies use Zapier every day to automate their businesses. Try Zapier for free today at zapier.com slash SBS. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com slash SBS. And our thanks to Zapier for sponsoring this episode. So look, you run a small business, but who's running your HR? If the answer, like most of us, is I'll figure it out myself, or honestly, no one, remember that one employee complaint can turn your world upside down. 
But HR is not just about avoiding risk. As a business leader, you need to do right by the people you employ. And this is why you want Bambi. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses like ours so that we can automate the most important HR practices and get our own dedicated HR manager. First, Bambi's HR Autopilot automates your core policies, your workplace training, and your employee feedback. Then, your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the more complex parts of HR and guide you to compliance, all available by phone, email, or even real-time chat. An in-house HR manager can cost up to 80 grand a year, but with Bambi, your dedicated HR manager starts at just $99 a month. There's no hidden fees. You can cancel at any time. Starts at just $99 a month. This is the part that I love the most about Bambi is they figured out how to make it work so that you're automating the stuff that can be automated. And then when you actually need a human to work with, there's a human right there for you. Your dedicated RGR manager. It's amazing. Bambi has received thousands of five-star reviews on Trustpilot and their customers are four times less likely to have a claim filed against them. So, Get started. Go to Bambi.com slash small right now for your free HR audit. Spelled B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash small. Bambi.com slash small. And our thanks to Bambi for sponsoring this episode. All right. So, Shannon, we've talked about this concept of a revenue stack before on the show many, many times. In yeah. fact, I think yep. all the way back to maybe, maybe not quite our first year, but I think pretty far yeah. back. It's a key, key principle in the uh, living the charmed life. Uh, and, you know, and I think especially when the economy gets choppy and we're not sure how things are going to look for the, you know, maybe the next year or so the, the revenue stack is critically important. So I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to revisit it today. So let, let's talk about the revenue stack. Like, let, let's explain to people what this is, right? The, the, the way I see it, and maybe you have a, a different definition of it, uh, although I think we're pretty aligned. The idea is I think, of the, the, I think of my income as coming from faucets, right? And, and having multiple faucets going all at different rates of flow at any given point in time. Is this revenue stack to me, right? Like there's there's avenues that can from which I can derive income. And and generally speaking, the ones I'm paying more attention to are the ones that that push off more income than the others. That's not always true. There's been some businesses in my career where I've had some passive or mostly passive income. And that's also wonderful. But <laughs> but it, it's yeah, this idea I'm for me of having the ability, if one faucet starts to dry up, either through my own fault or through no fault of my own, I have other faucets already built and ready to go that I can tap into instead of having to start something new when one thing just ends. Yes. I think the key thing is the the word end because, uh, you know, the only constant is change and things are going to change for your business and your personal life, all these things. And I, I pretty much we're in alignment. I, you know, it's for me, it's this, uh, a method of, you know, really diversifying where your income, where your revenue is coming from either in for your business or in your personal life. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and ju it's just like investing. I mean, if, if you go get some advice on investing, the recommendation is not going to be, put all your money in one thing, right? right. Or, uh, you know, one company, all this kind of stuff. Diversification is going to spread out the risk and also, you know, increases the opportunity for one of those uh, revenue streams to really take off, you know? And uh, I, I, I've tried my whole life to get them all to, to be on full blast at, uh, at once. <laughs> and I'm still, <laughs> I'm still working on that. Yeah. That's not, uh, uh, I, I don't know how to, I have yet to learn how to do that. But, yeah. 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 But I think it's OK. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. In fact, that was one of the things, you know, when we realized when we were faced with the opportunity and ultimately the decision as to whether or not we wanted to sell the Mac Observer, uh, you know, last year, beginning of this year, uh, it was that was a big part of the the decision process for us was, OK, well, we have this revenue you know this this faucet in the revenue stack and yes like you know we were going to be paid for that asset but to no longer have it but i had come to look at it there had been times where the mac observer was my main focus and you know derived quite a from which i derived 
a bulk of my income. It had it had right. become different than that for me. It had, it had become not passive, but it had become a, as I like to say, a well-maintained business in maintenance mode, which I knew, at least in the back of my head, at any time, if something else dried up, I had this thing I could go and tap. And it was, like I said, well-maintained and we could turn it into a, you know, more of a cash generating thing if that's what we needed to do. And so selling that opportunity was was a, really a, one of the hardest things to wrap our heads around was oh we don't we aren't going to have this safety net if you will right you know right. and and so yeah. you know it it made me realize how tied i am to this concept of having a revenue stack like how how fundamental it has become for me that I couldn't just have one thing going. I, I don't, I right. think I'd be, I think I'd be very nervous and, and I'd be fine because that nerve that, you know, that anxiety or whatever it is would drive me to start something else. So. Yeah, it does. And it kind of ties into, there's this concept, uh, I don't know where it came from, but it's the power of having many bosses, which is, it's another way of saying, you know, this revenue stack. And, and I always like, People always say, oh, it's so risky starting a business, all these customers. And I, I, I disagree. I think it's riskier to rely on a one person, one boss, a one large company for your success. Uh, some one entity that, that makes decisions about your future that you may not be a part of. Um, or having someone that has dozens or hundreds of, and I'm quoting here, quote signs in the air, bosses. That same diversification, you know, it helps you build wealth and it helps protect the assets that you already have. So, yeah. so, so similar, similar concept. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, you know, they, they, they tell you when you're investing in, right. in the stock market, you know, the, the smart play. And most of the time this is true. Of course, you can, you could find individual exceptions to the, to the rule, but the smart play is to not put all of your money into one stock, right? You want to spread it around That's right. to diversify and and I look at this the same way. Now, that being said, it this is a little different than just investing in the market because theoretically you are at some level in control of what's happening with these businesses or with the relationships you have with these bosses. So, you know, it's it's a little different, but yeah, I'm yeah. I'm I definitely be, I, I'm in agreement with you that yeah, you need yeah. With, with just one. I've always said if you have just just one, even if you think you're in business for yourself, if you have just one client, uh, you, you're working for that client. That's it. Work for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah they control your before. future. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, right. And, and that's so, okay. You know, like that, but that's, that's a great way to get started. I know plenty of people who have started their own, especially like consulting practices or whatever sure. with one big client, but don't just, you know, stay there. They, they grow the business. They find other clients while using that one client as an anchor. Uh, I don't want to say a stepping stone. Cause that makes it seem like that one client isn't important, but using them as the path to being able to create a, a you know, a business around it. I think that's, that's great. But one client is not I a business. A idea. One client's a yeah. beginning. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, your, your business brain, if you're, if you're thinking like a business person, you know, you should always be thinking about this revenue stack idea along with this, you know, many bosses concept. And if you apply that framing to just how you think about your company, um, whatever you're working on, it, it's going to help you expand that out and uh, develop a revenue stack. And, you know, th th that's, that's the thing that, you know, I think we need to dive in next is how you actually go about starting one. Hey, while we're here, I want to take a minute and talk about a podcast that I, I think everybody's going to love. Because when it comes to covering all things tech, we've got a podcast for you. Every week, This Week in Tech gives you a no-holds-barred deep dive into how big tech influences our culture and our lives. You get to join Twit.tv's Leo Laporte and his ever-changing panel of journalists and experts every Sunday as they, and I get, I'm sometimes on this show with Leo, so sometimes we, break down and often disagree on the latest in tech. And this is kind of what I love about This Week in Tech is the panel is ever-evolving and you always get people who have thought 
thoughtful opinions to share and can articulate those opinions really well. And the conversation always goes in a fantastic direction, often one that I would never have predicted. And that includes when I'm on the show. So listen, go subscribe to This Week in Tech wherever you get your podcasts and enjoy. I think you're really going to like it. All right, let, let's talk about how to start a revenue stack. Like th- we've talked about how we've done it or how we wouldn't do it <laughs> or both. But, uh, you know, what, what's what's step one? How do, what, what, how do, we, yeah, get, well, how do I, we get somebody started? As I was, yeah, I was listing these out, you know, I was like writing some notes here for the show. And I mean, the first one is, you know, step one, start a small business. I mean, we've been telling you how to do this for 386 episodes. Um, you can go back and basically find a primer on every single topic related to that. And it's taking that step to get your business going, whether it's like Dave mentioned earlier, working for one customer and using them as a foundation to grow your, your company. Um, but getting started, that, that, that is just the, the first and foremost, the most important thing. If you already have your business up and running, we should talk about adding products or services to your existing business. And, and we've done that a couple of times. You know, we did a whole episode on subs- adding subscription services to your business. Yep. Uh, things that you may not have thought about that you could sell as a subscription. And uh, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Um, and we did a, another episode on uh, adding recurring income, just, you know, a little different than subscription business, but just that, that recurring income that you can uh, count on. So, you know, your existing small business, I guarantee has areas that you could push out and increase and start different and various uh, revenue streams coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, right. You, you, I, Looking at what you have and where can you tap into that for perhaps from a different angle, right? Is that a, That's right. a good way to look at yeah. it? Yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, a good example is if you're a contractor, let's say of some sort or HVAC or something, yeah. and you're going to businesses or even, you know, or, or residential places, if they've let you in their building or in their home, uh, they've already given you some level of trust and credibility. And what I've seen around here, there's a there's a company that in the beginning they were just doing like HVAC stuff. Um, it's called Philco. Uh, I'm sure the guy who owns his name is Phil. And so, uh, that's, that's good, as good the, guess, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, as their business developed, I just saw them adding more services, and they're for commercial buildings, and I've I've used them in the past. And they would add, oh, you know, we're inside your building. What other maintenance things can uh-huh. we do for you? And, you know, repair services, they added like carpet cleaning services, they added, you know, all these different things until they're massive. I mean, their their company was much bigger than mine. And I when they first started, I know they were, you know, it's just, just a couple of guys, but it, it leaning into that trust and credibility when you're inside someone's facility, uh, it's, it's just a great opportunity to uh, add new services to your, uh, you know, your, your mix. Yeah. OK, so it, this is. It, this is a great example for a lot of reasons. One of them is it's it's different than what we were talking about earlier, whereas this is not necessarily starting a brand new business, but diversifying the income streams of an existing business. And I, I like this yeah. idea, right? Because b- both are fully valid. There's nothing wrong with either one, but I'm glad you brought this example up because it it's good to highlight the fact that, yes, you – you don't have to just leave one business alone and go start something completely different. You can you can do this. You can employ this revenue stack concept in an existing business just by beginning to diversify and experimenting with other things. I, I love this idea of, you know, you're you're already in your clients lives or in the case of HVAC, literally in their homes. What else can you offer? You know, when we had our consulting business, we talked about uh, running an, our own ISP, right? Our internet service provider, oh, yeah. and, you know, yeah. and, and we found that that was going to be far too much of an investment for us, but that would have been a, a natural extension of our business, right? You know, where you're trusting us with this, of course you would trust us. You're already asking us for what is our favorite ISP. Cause you're going to go sign up for them. This was back in the dial up days. And I'm really glad we didn't get into the dial up game. Uh, but, uh, You know, it would be very easy for us to recommend ourselves because theoretically we would build a business that we would trust and want to recommend. And so, yeah, I like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it works. It, on the flip side, it is, hey, let's start a brand new business, but using the resources uh, that you already have or your knowledge. And, mm. and I, as an example, like our deals on the web business that we ran for about a decade. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dave. And, you know, you had the technology and advertising background. I'm a deal guy. I was already doing lots of things and finding, you know, uh, this kind of content for myself. And I was in that, uh, you know, ecosphere at the time and and just bringing those two things together and we created a, a successful company that you know it generated significant revenue and we both learned a tremendous amount yeah um it, and it wasn't that we had to go learn something else it was that we just had to package what we already knew in a different way that's right and, yeah and it was a new business but it wasn't and there were certainly things that we needed to learn whether we knew it or not uh, going into it, but we weren't starting from, from scratch in, in the, in the, in the things that we were doing. It was not the first website that I had ever published. Yep. It wasn't the first time you were like uh, curating deals. Right. It, so we right. took these things that we both knew how to do and we're sort of already doing had some infrastructure in fact, and, and just created something different to package up and yeah and make some money it was great yep yeah yeah it worked out great yeah um for your personal revenue stack you know starting a side hustle you know you hear everywhere people talk about it doing things uh, to make extra revenue we i did a, you know episode 380 I, we talked about how i started a side hustle and you know uh, it, it's a million dollar business now and it works out great i love it i've learned a tremendous amount and it was again using skills i already knew about but with a completely different product line that i knew absolutely nothing about right um but i guarantee you have skills and or and or access to information or you know something that you can get a, a business or uh, some sort of revenue generator uh, going and I, I would say don't overlook the i call it the power of small sums you know you've heard me say before on the show hey if you can make 500 bucks you can make 5000 and then you can scale it and make 50000 and then make 500000 but that that first small chunk of money is is uh, or can be challenging and, and but it can be the most important one because it teaches yeah. you that you've got something that it's think of it as the spark that lights the fire right yeah, and, and a proof of concept, right? So right. you can see, oh, right. look, I'm making a little bit of money. And somebody uh, paid for now. this. Like I did a yeah. thing, whatever it is, you created a product, you have a service, you made a website, whatever it is, if if somebody yeah. pays you for it once, okay, you're on to something. Now, you might have to tweak and, and rejigger some things to make it appealing to more customers or whatever, but- it, sure. the, the one person that is you know, the one company, whatever it is, the one, the first customer, the first dollar that comes in, the first five dollars that comes in, that's key right there because it lets you know, aha, I've got something here and I can go with it. Yeah. And I, I would There's say, reason. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, it's it can be hard, and you it is it, it can you can find yourself in a position where you say, well, I just don't know what that other idea would be. That's fine. Embrace your impatience, though. Don't let that die out. If you are, you know, if you realize you have, you know, one or, or maybe even three items in your revenue stack right now, but you want to have five, stay with that. You will. All you have to do is focus on wanting more and the ideas are there. You will notice them if you are looking for them. So don't worry about not having the idea. Just embrace your impatience about it, and you will start to see the things that might become the spark for that next business. Yeah. And to your point, none of this is easy. We talk about it, you know, and we're fluid in this because we've failed so many times at trying to make it work. Right. And, but you, you don't have to hit it out of the park with, with every single thing. You You're not going to, to get, yeah. Yeah, you're, it's just not going to happen. And I could tell you story after story. You know, I still own what I would argue is the most expensive television set in the world because I had the foolish idea to get into the TV business at the absolute wrong time. And I keep that TV to remind me that, you know, hey, that cost you like a quarter of a million dollars <laughs> right there uh, that I never made back. And so starting small, trying new things uh, and, and 
you know, really seeing what works, generating a little bit of money. And maybe you find some little business or side hustle or a new part of your existing business that just generates a small amount of money. But, you know, if you own a business and all of a sudden you're generating even, you know, an extra few thousand dollars a month, that may pay for another employee to help you, you know, ramp up something else. And yeah. you just never know where it's going to lead. So the key is to try it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and the thing, the thing, I'll a couple things. You know, I stole this this stack concept from from Scott Adams, and he talks about it in a relation to a, a talent stack, and is that you should diversify your uh, your talents as well, and not count on you know being the best at one single thing, but rather you should know a number of things that have give you a broader uh, set of skills in life to make you more successful. Same same concept with this revenue stack, not putting everything into you know one laser like focus. That certainly can be successful. And, and and history is full. The world is it's not even history. Present day is full of plenty of people who obsessively focus on building one business and doing one thing with that business, and are wildly successful with it. Absolutely. If, if the risk is much bigger, the reward can be bigger. Um, but. You know, if you look at those, you, I would, I would argue though that those people, if you dig deep enough, you will find that at the very least, it's not the only thing they ever tried. Right? They, they may yeah, be okay. laser focused on it yeah. right now, but there was likely a time where they seemed like a scatterbrained maniac doing all kinds of different things, and one of them started to take off, and and they chose to just forget about everything else and focus on that. There's nothing wrong with that, but yeah. that that's yeah. You don't hear about most of those things, Correct. right? They're focused on the the story, and yeah. uh, you know, I, I mentioned Mark Cuban earlier and wanted to talk about this current thing. You know, th this guy's the whole history is riddled with failure, and yeah, he, you know, talks about that stuff. That that that's just the way it is. But the story he tells is, oh, you know, broadcast.com, and I plugged in the, I wanted to listen to the baseball, you know, show, and the internet couldn't do it. Da da da. da. Well, right. that, that's looking back and creating a, you know, a powerful narrative. Yeah, what was it? Steve Jobs said that, that it's the, you, the only way you can connect the dots is going backwards. You never, you yeah. never actually see them when you're going forwards. That's just, that's right. It, yeah. Yeah. You can't. In a lot of ways, that's what you're hearing when you listen to, to, uh, you know, Dave and I is that we're connecting the dots back, trying to help you, uh, you know, go forward. Um, the, the last thing I want to say about revenue stack is a common, uh, I don't want to use the word excuse, but I'm going to, I'm going to use it anyway. Common <laughs> excuse I hear that, oh, I just, I just don't have time. I don't have time. I'm so focused just on my current business. Well, I, I would argue that you need, you either haven't read it or you need to go back and read the e-myth or read it again and learn about delegating and replacing yourself at your, at your business and getting out of that superhero complex. And if, you know, if you're if you say you don't have time to start a side hustle, I would say you're probably all caught up on all the current Netflix uh, shows and you could talk about those like crazy, but you're giving up a few hours every evening that you could be doing something to change your life. Yep. And, yep. Yep. So, yeah, I'm not caught up in the Netflix my, stuff, man. <laughs> I'm a little bit, but I'm, a, I'm an older guy now. I've done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a little more time on my hands. Uh, but we, we'd certainly love to hear, uh, you know, what you think, if what you think we got right, what we forgot, what we got wrong, what sort of revenue stack have you developed over time? Um, feedback at businessshow.co and uh, also come into the Facebook group at businessshow.co slash Facebook and share your story. Yeah, I, I, I am very eager to hear now that we've dissected this concept of the revenue stack. I know there are some of you out there who are saying, wait, I'm already doing that. Even though you might at the beginning of the episode might have said, oh, this is something I want to learn how to do. I want to hear how you're employing this revenue stack or how this relates to what you're doing, because I think there's a lot for all of us to learn here. And that's that's why we get together. It's, it's to share the business brain. So thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Thanks to our sponsors, zapier.com slash SBS and bambi.com slash small. And go check out This Week in Tech as well. Great show. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week.